In this lesson, we'll be developing a simple carnival style shooting game. Given a certain number of bullets, the user is to pop balloons as they float upwards in order to earn points. As the balloons cross certain thresholds, their point values multiply. This provides the player with the dilemma, shoot the balloons as they appear, or wait to shoot the balloons as they cross the thresholds in order to earn more points, but possibly miss other balloons. Let's get started. Since I'm developing this game for iPad, I've created a config.lua file with the following settings. A frame rate of 60 frames per second to give it a nice smooth uh, feel. And as well, this is the important part, width and height of 768 by 1024. These are the dimensions of the iPad in portrait. And I've set the scale to letterbox, though I don't really intend to scale the graphics for any other platform. And I'm not using the image suffix portion of the config.lua, but this is something I use in other projects, so I just leave it in. So the config.lua is present in our project folder, and as well, the build.settings file is also present. And if you don't have this present, you can create one. Um, here, I have the Comica uh, Axis font set using the UI app fonts um, argument within the plist. And I've gone over that in a previous movie. I'll be using this font in the GUI of the application. You'll also notice that within the project folder, I have a director.lua file. This is Ricardo Robbers' director class, and we'll be using that to, to transition between scenes. I've pre-coded the main.lua file using the director.lua uh, class, so we'll go over the code really quickly before we jump into coding the GUI. I have two constants. These constants I use in all of my tutorials, a constant for the content width and a constant for the content height. I'm hiding the status bar uh, so that it doesn't show within the simulator or within the game. And I've cached the math.random function in a custom global table called m. Since m exists in main.lua, and that's at the top of our file hierarchy, I'll be able to access this throughout my entire project. Now I've established a director uh, variable, which stores all of the uh, methods and variables of the director class, and I've created a main group. This is required by the director class. Within this main function, we are inserting the director module and then calling from director a change scene method, which then moves to menu, and menu is going to be menu.lua, which we will now create. So I'll close main.lua and choose file new and choose empty file and call this menu.lua. Navigate to the right folder and then choose finish. We'll start coding. Module, open and close parentheses, dot, 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 comma, package, dot, see all. And this is needed because we're loading an external module. Now the director class requires the following, function new, open and close parentheses, end. And we're to create a group, local scene with a capital S, equals display dot new group. And then return scene. Okay, so we need to do this at a, at a minimum for the director class to work. Now, let's create our GUI for our menu. Local GUI equals display dot new group. And local BG underscore frame equals display dot new image. Open and close parentheses, and then the string to the path images forward slash bg uh, dash frame dot png. Okay, local bg underscore knockout equals display dot new image, and again images 
forward slash bg dash knockout dot png and local bg underscore rect equals display dot new rect. Um, this is going to create a new rectangle with a top of zero, a left of zero, and then it's going to be the width of the display and the height of the display. Those are the constants from earlier. Okay, now basically we have created two images, which will one will act as the frame of the GUI, one will act as the knockout. The knockout here is the sort of inset version of the glass, and then a background uh, using a rectangle. Okay, let's position some items. BG underscore rect equals half of the width. So that's the width constant times point or 0.5 and then bg rect dot y equals the height constant times 0.5 and before we move on I noticed an error not bg rect equals but bg rect dot x equals half of the width and bg rect dot y equals half of the height now let's set a fill color for bg rect bg rect set fill color and I've pre chosen this bluish color you can use uh, Photoshop or any any online uh, color tool to get the RGB values now it's time to insert these display objects into GUI or else it will not work GUI colon insert and our first object and to our second object and our third object and remember that they are inserted from lowest to highest as we move from the top of the script down so those items inserted later will appear on top of items inserted previously Okay, so BG Rect will be in the background, that followed by the knockout in the middle, and then the frame on top. Okay, let's give the menu a title, local title equals display dot new text and start a string space balloon burst. Now the reason there's a space here, this font that I'm using, this custom font Comica Axis. Um, has some quirks if you start characters um, at the left they seem to get chopped off uh, by the OpenGL in Lua so I insert a space as a hack so that we can see the full um, character so the string the top is zero the left is zero call the font comic uh, axis and again this is a custom font that I have set to load within the build.settings. This does not come standard on the iPad. And then a size of 72. Let's position it. Title.x equals half of the width. And title.y, as you would guess, equals half of the height. And actually what we'll do is we'll take half of the height as a starting point and then we will go 120 pixels less than half the height. Okay, now local play underscore btn equals display dot new text. And this will be the button that the user presses to play the game. Space play, remember the space is a hack. Um, if you're using a font that isn't wonky, you don't need the space. Comma zero, comma zero comma start a string name of the font comica axis and then comma size 48 position it on the screen play underscore button equals half of the width and play underscore button dot y equals half of the height I always do that times 0 
and then we're starting from half of the height and we'll go 120 pixels down. And once again, I noticed that I made this mistake of it's play underscore button dot X. Okay, we gotta, gotta fix that. Now we'll add a custom property, play dot play underscore button dot scene equals game. And in earlier lessons, you've seen that I've used this particular property to feed into the director class in order to load different scenes. Okay, now let's insert these two new objects into the GUI. GUI uh, colon insert title GUI colon insert play underscore button. Okay, let's define some functionality for the play button. So first play button colon add event listener and we'll listen for the touch event and we'll create a change scene method. Okay, now let's define that change scene method. Local function change scene and if e dot phase double equals ended or e dot phase double equals canceled, then we'll call the director class director colon change scene. Open and close parentheses e dot target dot scene. Okay, everything is good so far. And now the last thing we need to do is we need to insert this GUI display group into the scene. Scene colon insert GUI. All right, we'll save it and head to the simulator. And let's open up the file. Uh, it looks like we have an error. Let's check it out. Bring the error console over. Um, it says here that we have a bad error or bad argument on new rect. Okay, let's check that out. Oh, I forgot the comma between the height and the width. No problem. And there we go. There is our title screen. And of course, if we were to press play, we would get an error because we have not yet created the um, file that this will go to. And that's what we'll do next. Let's create the game.lua file, file, new file, empty file, next, game.lua, choose, and we'll go to the desktop, and choose the folder, finish. Okay, since this is using the director module, we need to start it with module, open and close parentheses, package see all, And then create our new function, function new and local scene with a capital S equals display dot new group. And we'll return this variable. In the interest of time, from here on out, I'll only be live coding uh, the bits of the game that are most critical to gameplay. And for this particular tutorial, that's going to include the balloons, the bullets, uh, the logic in terms of figuring out play and, uh, or win and loss conditions, and as well, any of the physics involved, because we're gonna use physics to make the balloons rise up and as well to, do, to detect collisions. So I'll be copying and pasting a lot of the GUI code um, just out of expedience so we can really go into detail uh, the other bits of code that require line-by-line -line explication. The first code that I'll copy is the creation of different display groups where our objects will be placed. So here we have a background group, a foreground group, and then the GUI group, and they've been inserted in the same order, so that the background is the group furthest in back in the stack, foregrounds in the middle, and then the GUI. Now we'll create the background frame and the thresholds 
First, we will prepare a variable for the thresholds. So these, this will actually be the area where we're going to set up a lot of variables. So set up some vars, and we'll create a threshold variable. So local thresholds equals um, an empty table. Okay, I've copy and pasted the GUI and threshold variable uh, code. So now I'll paste it. It'll be a lot of code, but I'll go over it. Okay, so the first thing that we do is we set up some background images, and that's the frame and the knockout, which we also used in the menu. And in the GUI group, we've inserted the background frame. We're inserting the knockout after we create the thresholds. Now, this table we just created at the top of the script, uh, the thresholds empty table here, and we're setting three thresholds, and the thresholds are the areas where the balloons as they rise will check against and then vary their multiplier depending on what threshold they're in or that they've crossed. So there are three here and I'm creating new rectangles for each. So you see threshold one, two, and three, and then new rectangle uh, constructors that have absolute um, X and Y or width and height positions. And then I always uh, use zero, zero for top and left because I position them later. Okay, we set the, th the fill color for the thresholds, and these fill colors are a blue, um, a green, and a red. And then we set the X and Y, and you can see that I've set that here. Uh, the code is dependent a bit upon the previous threshold, so the first threshold is position uh, always within the center on the X, and, the, and then the Y is dependent upon... Um, the height minus half of the threshold height, the height of the display minus half of the threshold height. Uh, so you can step through this code and see how that's positioned. And then I create three local variables that represent the uh, multiplier images. So these are numbers with an X so that the player can understand how much, um, how much of a multiplier is applied to the points of the balloon. And there are three multipliers, a 1X, a 5X, and a 10x, and these images are overlaid over the top of the thresholds. Okay, there's some positioning code for these uh, multipliers. This is standard positioning code. Um, again, you might want to pause the movie if you want to uh, sit and type this out. And then finally, after all of the object instantiation and positioning, we're going to insert these objects into the appropriate layers. So the thresholds are going into the background layer, not the GUI layer. Okay, so the background layer actually is all the way in the back. The GUI layer is all the way to the front. So we're inserting the thresholds in order of one, two, and three. Since they don't overlap, it really doesn't matter what order. And then we're inserting the BG knockout, which was created right after the BG frame. So the BG knockout, I'll zoom in when I show you it in the simulator to see what that looks like. And then in the foreground layer, we're inserting the different multiplier images. Okay, we'll save it and head to the simulator. And now we'll press play. And you can see we have the different thresholds, which are blue, green, and red. And these are the T1x, T5x, and T10x variables, these images that are overlaid on top of the thresholds. Now I'll zoom in so you can see this knockout. Um, you can see there's a little bit of texture over top of each of these colors. That's the knockout. It also, um, there's a really subtle lining of the rounded rectangle to give it an inset um, sort of feel. Uh, again, that's this uh, translucent knockout image that is being overlaid on top of the background. Okay, let's zoom back out and head back to the code. And from here, now we need to code the score. I have some code ready for the score and I'll paste it after the insertion of the T1, 5, and 10x variables. This code is really straightforward. A score text variable that is creating a new text display object. I remember that with this font we have to use this hack of a space before uh, the text and so that the text isn't chopped off. So this is a label score, and it's positioned on the screen. And then there is 
the score variable, notice that the score variable here that refers to the display object does not have an underscore in front of it. Um, that's because we're going to create another variable that will be called score but with an underscore and it will be used for the numeric representation of the score. So anyhow, this particular display object has the space with a concatenation of then a score variable which we have yet to create. So let's go ahead and create that at the top of the script after thresholds local underscore score equals zero. Save that and then the rest of the um, instantiation code is very straightforward. And we need to set the fill color or for the text or the text color rather and it's just set to black. And then finally we insert it in the GUI layer save it and head back to the simulator, refresh, and here we see score and zero. Looks like the zero isn't appropriately placed. That can be fixed rather easily. And that's because, ah, yes, I see a score.x with this reference here, left uh, score left x. I forgot to copy that over from the completed code. Uh, no worries, we will create uh, up in the set up some vars area, local, and this is called score left x. Copy that, paste it, then equals 160. Save it, head back to the simulator, and there we go. Okay, so now we've got our GUI set up, our threshold set up, and the score set up, and it's finally time to get down to the creation of the balloons and the bullets. We'll be creating a balloon class that will allow for the creation of balloons using data from an external module. Let's create the balloon class now. File, new file, empty file, and balloon.lua. Okay, and then we'll choose the project folder, just as we have done, and finish. Okay, this is not going to be a separate scene so we only need to include module with the uh, package see all argument. So we don't need the new function. Okay, and before we continue, let's go back to the game code and we'll create some references to this module. We'll do this under the set up some vars. So classes and this is local balloon equals require balloon. Okay, so this, within the game.lua um, file, this variable balloon will refer to all of the code uh, variables and methods within the balloon class, which is in the balloon.lua file. Uh, so we're gonna start moving between multiple um, files so you'll want to be extra careful to track where we're at in the code. Let's go back to balloon.lua. And so we're going to need a constructor to create new balloons. And we'll do that by creating a function new balloon and end. Okay, I'm going to copy and paste some initialization code and then go into detail with some of the particulars about the balloon. So our balloon is essentially a circle, and this is a circle created um, in Corona. This is not a preloaded image. So local balloon equals a new kind of circle, and I'm randomly setting the fill color uh, to some value between one and 255 on the RGB, and then positioning it appropriately. So here it's being um, positioned half of the width and then the Y on the X and then the Y is the height plus um, 20 pixels. So it's 20 pixels below the display. We wanna make sure we return balloon. Okay, that's critical because when we call this from the game class, if we don't actually re return a value, the code's gonna fail um, pretty miserably. Okay, so now let's set up some custom properties. Okay, so balloon.type equals balloon. 
and this will be used when we're checking collisions with the bullets later. And balloon dot hit is false. That is, it hasn't been hit this particular balloon. Balloon dot multiplier is nil. And this multiplier will be affected when we traverse the uh, thresholds. And then balloon points equals one. And this is the point value of the balloon. Now in this particular version of the game, all balloons will be worth one point and then they will have their point value multiplied. But certainly you could use this property to affect the point value of each balloon individually if you wanted to. Okay, let's define some more methods. We'll make the balloon rise up by uh, attaching some physics to it. So we'll head to uh, the bottom of the code and type physics dot add body and this will be balloon and we will add the following uh, we'll, we'll make it a kinematic body so it's not affected by gravity and then give it the following body properties density of zero and a bounce of zero friction of zero, and a radius of 40, because it is going to be a circle physics body shape. And you'll notice that the radius is equal to the radius of the um, balloon. Okay, balloon, and we're going to set linear ve velocity to allow the balloon to rise up. Now, we don't want all of the balloons to rise up at the same rate, so what we're going to do is we're going to create a variable um, that will allow us to pipe in velocity when we create the new balloon um, from the game.lua file. So balloon uh, colon set linear velocity, open and close parentheses, zero, and velocity uh, times negative one. And before we continue, let's make sure we actually define this variable called velocity, which is basically the argument fed into new balloon. So the arguments fed into the new balloon constructor pipes its way down to set linear, linear velocity. Now the reason we have negative one is because remember that um, in on the device y progresses from zero to the height of the device as you go from the top of the device down so we actually need the y value to decrease which is what's happening here um, we need the velocity that is the to decrease anyhow so we'll save that and since we've called the um, physics engine we need to make sure that we require the physics engine so we'll go to game.lua and we will start the physics engine just after the um, creation of the scene. So local physics equals um, require physics. And then start the physics engine. Physics dot start. Okay, and save it. Now if we were to render this to the simulator, nothing would happen because we have yet to actually create a balloon. Uh, so let's go ahead and do that in our game code now, just as a test. So all the way at the bottom, we'll write the following code. Local b equals balloon dot new balloon. And then we'll give it um, a value for the linear velocity. Let's say 50. And then let's make sure we insert it. Foreground insert B. Now let's go to the simulator and test it out. Oh, looks like we have an error, which I'm not surprised. Let's sleuth the error. And uh, looks like I misspelled something. Game. Lua line 15. Yes, misspelled the module. 
save that and head back to the simulator. Okay, so now the balloon is rising up. And if I were to play it again, remember that we randomized the color, so now the color is different. Okay, so this is the basis of our balloon instantiation code, and that is that we will re require the class at the top of the code and assign all of its um, properties and methods to this variable called balloon. And then later in the game.lua file, we will start instantiating balloons by creating variables, referring to the class, and its new balloon method. And then remember that within this uh, balloon class, we have this instantiation argument here of linear velocity. So we'll go to balloon.lua, and you see velocity, and that pipes down to this line here, balloon set linear velocity. And it's setting velocity, I should mention, this is on the y. So this is velocity on the x, which is zero, comma, then velocity on the y. We'll head to the main.lua file again, and we'll now create a method to spawn some balloons. So at the bottom of the code, where we had previously typed this local b equals balloon.new balloon, we'll delete that and type local function spawn balloons and number. And this is going to be an argument for how many balloons we wish to spawn. Okay, type end. Now within this particular function, local, uh, actually, let's back that up. Let's create a timer variable, tmr equals timer dot perform with delay. And we will spawn balloons at regular intervals, let's say every two seconds, so that is 2,000. We'll call a function called spawn, which we'll create in a minute. And then the number of times that we'll call the timer is equal to this argument number. So this is how many balloons we want to actually create. Now you, you recall some code like this in the Orb Smasher tutorial. This is pretty common for spawning elements. Okay, so now let's create this spawn method. So right above timer, local spawn, and we'll feed it E. E is representative of the timer object. Uh, that's gonna fail, local function spawn, and end. Okay, so now let's start creating some balloons. So we need to first create an instance of balloon. Okay, and assign it a random linear velocity. So to do this, local b equals balloon dot new balloon. And we'll use m dot random. And don't forget that we cache that random function in the main dot Lua. And we'll give it a random velocity between 50 and 100 on the y. Okay, so we're gonna need some sort of table to store all of the balloons. So let's go back to the top of the code. And here, local balloons. Notice the plural. There we go, a table. All right, so now back to the spawn balloons um, function. Let's type here. We're going to store the balloon instance in the balloons table using the table number as the index. Okay, so balloons um, b equals b. So this is an associative um, index. We're going to use the table number that's returned by b as the index and say that that is equal to this instance of a balloon. And one thing you should know is, is when you do this, um, when you start storing things associatively, you're not going to be able to use the hashtag to get the length of balloons. But that's not actually critical in this particular case. Okay, so let's position the balloons. Balloons. I keep using one O. Let's try that. Again, balloons B equal, uh, dot X equals and... So on the x, we're going to have a random value, m.random, and it'll be between half of the width of the device, or the display, and then 
half of the width times 1.75. So I'm setting an X range where the balloons will start floating up. So that way they don't all float up in the same place. Okay, we're going to implement a flag that will uh, let the garbage collection, which will code way down the line, know that this balloon needs to be removed later. Flag the balloon for removal later. Balloons B dot remove equals true. So far so good. We've got our balloon instance. We have placed it in the balloons table and that balloons table was created here under set up some vars. And then we've set this X position and we flagged it for removal. Now we need to insert the balloon into the background group. All right, actually the foreground group, not the background. Foreground group. Okay, so foreground, colon insert, and balloons B. We'll save it, and the last thing we need to do, and we're just gonna be really dogged about this every time we use a timer, is we need to cancel the timer when we're done with it, and we need to nil out the variable. So, cancel and nil timer when done. So, if e.count, remember e is representative of the timer, and the dot count property is the current timer count. So, if we're gonna call 10 balloons, if e dot count double equals um, number, and that's the number of balloons, so if we're gonna spawn 10 and e dot count equals 10, that means that's the last count, then end. So timer dot cancel TMR, and TMR equals nil. Okay, so we've canceled and nilled the timer. Okay, so we have a spawn balloons method and we're feeding it a certain number of balloons, and that number is fed into a timer that every two seconds calls this spawn function, and it'll call it um, whatever the number of times is. This spawn function is a local function within the spawn balloons method, and we create an instance of the balloon and store that within the table using the balloon as an associative index position it on the X, and then flag the balloon for removal later. And that, that part of the code is going to be a while before we get to it. Lastly, we need to insert it into the foreground layer. And don't forget that we've already inserted all of these layers um, earlier in the movie here under the groups. Okay, so let's now test this out and call the spawn balloons. And let's spawn um, five balloons. Save it and head to the simulator and refresh it. Okay, and now we'll watch as balloons float upwards. That's our first balloon. And you'll notice now they're at different rates because we fed them different velocities. So there are five balloons, and so far so good. Uh, we're going to need to account for the balloons as they go off screen. We don't want memory to just hang around. We want to actually remove the balloons. So we'll be coding a, a method that will remove the balloons. And as well, we're, since we're using physics, we're gonna code um, some uh, walls, ceiling, and ground so that the balloons, when they collide against those areas, we can just instantly remove them. And that's where we'll start with the next part of our tutorial. For a small fee, you can download the project files for this tutorial at cheetomosquito.com.